Shout out to Thomas Loop on Patreon for six months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on this channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. This is going to be a quick one and I'm going to be covering voxel effects in Cinema 4D and how to make any object into a voxeled object, basically. It actually doesn't have to be cubes, which is the traditional voxel effect, it's like cubifying something, um, like, a, like a Minecraft look, basically. Um, you can actually use any object for this, so you could make, in our case, I'm going to be doing a skull, you could actually make a skull out of smaller skulls. So you can use any object like that. Before we get started, I want to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and videos like this. Also, be sure to like the video. At 100 likes, I will include the Cinema 4D file for download for everyone. It's also available now on my Patreon if you're a $5 tier member. Um, so be sure to check that out and let's get started. Okay, so I opened up my Light Studio in Cinema 4D. This is what I use for all my renders. Um, it's available in my store and I'm actually going to use a few materials from my materials pack as well. So we'll grab a couple reflective materials here. It's actually got purple and yellow. And then I'm going to grab a metal one as well, just in case. And I'm going to paste in the skull I have. You can use any object you have. This is obviously just a normal skull object. And uh, you can do text. You have to convert the text to a uh, object though, which I've shown in many of my tutorials. Basically uh, right click and um, connect objects and delete on a text layer. But we have our object set up, so let's go ahead and create a cube or whatever um, object we want that will make up our original object. So we could do a skull here, a smaller skull, and have the skull made of skulls, but we're just gonna stay with the cube. And I'm gonna go with a 0.5 or a 2.5 centimeter size for the X, Y, and Z. And uh, if we hide the skull for the moment, you can see we have a very tiny cube. I don't even think you can see it um, really in this camera view. Um, but we wanna go to the cloner, add the cube there, and we wanna go to our cloner settings, set the, um, first of all, set the mode to grid array, and then we want the instance to be multi, and we want endpoint mode. Now, you can set this up to be the exact size of your skull, basically, um, so you don't have any leftover cubes, but it might be easier for you to set it up uh, just completely equal, so like 300, 300, 300. So you could do that, and then all the count would be the same. Um, I actually have my sizes written down, so uh, I'm gonna go with that. So I had 200, 300, 300, so it's very similar. But then when you do your count, you got to account for the size here. So I went with a count of 40 and then the others were 60. And you can see it creates this grid of cubes or whatever object you want. Again, does not have to be cubes. Uh, and we're going to have to drag this up a bit, I believe, to fit into the skull. And at this point, everything's going to probably slow down because it's a lot of cubes being um, like calculated. Uh, everything like that so the amount of time it takes to do this will increase now so maybe you want to start lower uh, maybe we just knock all these down real fast just so we can get the right alignment let's hop into the other view and move it forward and I think our whole skulls encompassed in that grid array yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and set our count back to what it was. And let's actually create the effect. So uh, with the cloner selected, you can see my uh, count hasn't updated, but um, it should here any sec. If we go to MoGraph, Effector, and Volume, and the object we want is the skull object. So Object 01, I'm gonna drag to the Volume object. Go to Parameter, Check Visibility set the scale to one so it's visible and then you can hide the original object now i don't know how long this will take to calculate oh there we go so you can see if i render it we already got our voxel skull looks pretty good obviously if you want more detail you can use more cubes at a smaller size um, or you could just use more cubes so they overlap each other um, 
completely up to you. There's a lot of ways you could go about doing that. Um, and you're basically done with the uh, voxel effect. But if you want to add more, which is something I did, I like to have the multicolored views. Um, you can go on that volume, go to MoGraph, Effector, Shader. And this will be very similar to my last tutorial in the volume builder. Um, it's, it's basically the exact same thing here. So if we go to minus one on the scale, go to the shading, add a noise and set this to whatever I'm going to actually knock up the contrast because this will give a different look. Um, but if I do that, maybe I up the global scale to 200, uh, we'll get some bigger cubes in this and then some smaller ones that kind of disappear. And what we're going to do is put all of this in a null, duplicate it maybe two more times, switch the uh, noise maps for the other two uh, or the noise shaders, and then put materials on all of them. So you get this blend of all three materials and it will make up the skull look. Oh, and I just realized I did not put the shader on the cloner. So um, if you have the cloner selected when you select the shader, it will apply it, but I did not. So we have to go to our effectors on the cloner and add the shader to it. Now we should get the effect we want. You can see when I bump up that contrast real heavy on the noise map, it really gives you some bigger and smaller areas, which I think is an interesting look. But let's go ahead, select the shader down to the cloner, Alt G um, to put that in a null. And let's copy Command C and paste it. And then uh, we can go to the shader. You can play this easy and just do two different types of noises. So you could come in and basically reverse this. So if we go to the black, make it white and the white make it black it will reverse the map and then the areas that are big on the first one are going to be small and vice versa so if we actually open these both up and add some simple colors here so maybe i add a blue to the cube and then a purple to the other and if we render that we get a look like this which i think looks really cool i love the the two color um style there uh, but if you wanted more colors you could just change these shaders so uh, i would probably knock down this contrast so it wasn't as extreme and change the shader to whatever else you can mess around with the noises they all give different looks uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this one more time and we'll change the shader again to something i don't know we'll pick a random one we'll just do this and throw a yellow on the cube and you can see that gives you all those colors uh, i could uh, change the shader for this one you can see it's a lot of white uh, if i bumped up the uh, darkness of it to get more black i would get more yellow in that that's basically the effect one last thing i want to point out too is if you want something uh with the isometric view like this guy which i think this is the best look for anything voxel if you want that you just need to grab a camera hop into the view and come down to projection and set it to isometric and that will give you the isometric view you'll have to line it up and there's an isometric view i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like on the video at 100 likes i'll include the cinema 4d files to download uh, if you don't want to wait you can actually support me on patreon at a five dollar tier and download them now as well as a bunch of other stuff also be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and videos follow me on twitter at quezzy follow my instagram that's quezzy and i will see you guys in the next one peace